Good afternoon. We have Novak Djokovic for you. Um, just please indicate if you want to ask a question and uh, try and keep following questions to minimum, please. Who's going to go first? Okay. Novak, congratulations on your title. Thank you. It has been a long time since you've played the uh, build-up tournament, so just how do you feel having done that? It seems to have paid off. Yes, it, it seems to seems to be uh, right now from this perspective a good decision to uh, to have played uh, Eastbourne. Um, obviously, I was not playing too many of the events in the week prior to the, the beginning of the Grand Slam in my career, but I've decided to do so this time because I felt like I needed more matches in general, but uh, especially on the grass that is very unique surface that requires um, time for adaptation and adjustment, especially for the movement. So um, I felt like this time I, I needed a proper tournament um, rather than just playing a couple of exhibition matches. So um, I'm glad I've made that decision and, uh, and that, I, that I went to Eastbourne because it was a very positive experience on and off the court as well. People were very kind. It was a <clears throat> great week. Uh, with a lot of good positive energy and, and uh, uh, a lot of time spent on the practice courts uh, for, for quality matches. I was just overall very happy with the, with the way it went and, and where my form is at. A bit of an off topic question, but if you could, could go back in time and give your younger self one or two advices, what would it be? Mm. <laughs> um, well, I think that's probably a, a thing that many people would love to do, you know, go back in time and, 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 and kind of influence certain events and certain things differently from, from the, the present perspective, right? Because you're, you learn your lessons, you're wiser and, and you're more experienced. But um, I guess patient, patience, you know, that's something that uh, lacks a lot to... Uh, <laughs> young people and um, to myself it was at the same time kind of trusting the process uh, as I go along um, but you know I generally don't like to um, to revert back and, and, and have regrets or yeah, I'm not holding anything back because I I feel that uh, life <clears throat> is just orchestrated in such a way that um, is best for us at that moment to evolve as human beings. So <clears throat> I, I think everything was happening for a reason on the court, on the tennis court, off the tennis court as well, to got me to work, to the place where I am at the moment. So I'm I'm just very grateful overall to to the life for that. Can you talk a little bit about adding Mario to your team and why you thought of him? Is it just for here? Is he taking vacation from his real job? <laughs> <All that kind stuff>. <laughs> <laughs> the last question you're gonna have to ask him. Um, uh, but I, he was pre-scheduled to be in London, and when we talked on the phone uh, probably about three, four weeks ago, and um, you know, of course, prior to that call, I talked with Andre about you know who potentially can be joining us uh, in the team uh, as someone who would potentially spend a little bit more time with me. Um, on the tour when when Andre is uh, not available, um, and and Mario was was top of the list, and he's someone that I've known for so many years, um, and we're friends, and um, he was one of the, the 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 players on the tour that I've had closest relationship to even during the active career, which wasn't easy, and it's not easy, obviously, you know, because he was top ten player, and we were kind of competitors and rivals, but uh, we always had a tremendous respect and, and uh, uh, support towards each other. And we spend a lot of time off the court and speak the same language. So things were uh, things were very easy for us in, in terms of communication. And, and after that, after, you know, obviously he was very unfortunate with his injuries and and, and illnesses that kind of uh, ended his career. And it's, it's really unfortunate because he's definitely one of the most talented players that I have ever, I have ever seen. He loved playing on grass. It's where he made his, his best results, I think, on Grand Slams, beating Feather a year, one year, and reaching, I think, semifinals. And um, he beat me here as well. I remember that. 
in a, in a long four setter and um after he ended his professional tennis career he he went different way uh he's on the wall street now obviously during his active career he was studying law which not many not many professional athletes generally do you know study at the same time while while they're while they're um you know actively participating in in, in a professional sport especially for someone of his quality he was top 10 player so that was quite an effort, and he was very, very, you know, very smart, very educated, always, and uh, just very kind guy. Uh, you know, admired by many people and respected around the tour. So, you know, we we spoke, and then he said that he, he was anyway coming to London, and that um, he would be happy to spend some time with Andre and myself uh, during Wimbledon, and uh, that's that's more or less everything we talked about in terms of. What comes after that, we'll we'll see. Uh, you know, we'll take a day at a time and see how how everything flows during this tournament, and then and then see see where that that takes us. <clears throat> uh, years ago, I remember you spoke about having problems with allergies. Was was that ever an issue here for you with the grass and the? No, not really, not really. But uh, well, that was that was actually at the very beginning of my professional career uh, just that year year and a half after that I I solved that problem and I, I thought that the the allergy was you know I mean actually I've, I've had that ever since I was five six seven years old till about 1920 um, you know allergies in pollen or uh, home dust or things like that and just kept coming and uh, you know, many periods of the year where I would just not be able to sleep well because it just it, my nose would be completely blocked. And um, I tried many things. I tried, you know, uh, inhalations. I tried, I even had a s surgery and just a bunch of stuff. Uh, but everything was in diet. So when I changed my diet, I never had an allergy ever in my life. So that's, that was the key. Before fixing it, would it crop up though? Maybe your first couple of years. I can't remember it where it, if I had uh, issues here. I, I remember that that spring time that was that was probably the hardest. <clears throat> um, Rogers here going for Grand Slam number nineteen. It's coming up for ten years since you played him in your first Grand Slam final at the U.S. Open. I was just wondering if you had any particular memories from that match, and if at all. Mm -hmm. Going up against someone like him in your first Grand Slam final was that intimidating at all? Well, uh, of course I remember. It was, I think, three three tie breaks we played, um, or two tie breaks, uh, in that finals back in 2007. And of course for me it was just an incredible occasion, an incredible opportunity to just be part of, you know, the finals of the Grand Slam. And um, of course playing against Roger was 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 a a huge task a huge huge challenge you know to overcome i've played well i, th I think you know coming to play uh, against him in the first grand slam final and you know taking him to a couple of tie breaks uh losing straight sets but still i thought it was a um uh, worthy of worthy performance for my side and or on the other hand he was just too good at, the, at that point uh but that was that was a huge springboard for me uh my rest of the career, only a few months later, I won the first Grand Slam title in, in Australian Open. Um, yeah, I mean, once you once you reach the, the finals of a Grand Slam, that's that's where I think uh, uh, all of a sudden you you reach the next next dimension of the confidence level and self belief because no other really tournament can match that that kind of feeling of being in the finals of Grand Slam or eventually winning it. So. That, that opens a lot of doors for you internally. We have time for only two more questions in English, so here and here. So you first, please. You've been talking quite openly about finding like a new balance in, in life, not depending so much on, on results on, on the court. Um, do you feel that you're progressing in, in this process over the last few weeks, maybe? Well, it's, it's not a process that it's only lasted for the last few weeks i mean it's lasting the whole lifetime you know it's just it's it's the constant evolution and it's just that when the things are 
completely going your way in this case in professional tennis career when I was winning constantly and 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 being dominant in in the tennis world you know I I you know you're happy and you're content and you feel like everything is um kind of evolving around around tennis and but it's it's not like that and and you know some other things were suffering during during that time and so it's it's always i guess figuring out what's the right balance and right formula to be you know completely i guess in peace and satisfied with yourself and everything that you do you know so i you know i used to base all my happiness on winning a tennis match and I think many athletes today are doing that. So I, I try not to do that anymore because it's just, it's not like I don't care about winning and losing tennis match. Absolutely not. I, I of course, I love to win every tennis match that I play in, but I, I don't try to, you know, take that as, as very essential, uh, you know, moment in my life, which, you know, determines my happiness. Uh, so it's it's a different approach but uh you know i'm still here and i'm still motivated and still i still keep on going and i'm still glad for uh to to kind of experience whatever professional tennis career has for me Last thing, next question. Uh, i think it's fair to say throughout your career you've really been known as a pioneer someone w willing to take sensible risk and now you're on a journey here to try and get the the Wimbledon Trophy, but you're also on another journey, which some people would say is really intriguing, self-empowering. Could you could you talk about uh, the process of an elite athlete trying to go inward and uh, focus on on the inner self? And you've said through this work, you get to sort of focus on the emotions and mm -hmm. thoughts that that you wish to dwell on. Well, it's, uh, thank you for your question, but it, it's it's kind of hard to <laughs> simplify that, you know, and, and just say even though life in general is simple, and I mean, at least in my opinion, when we just as people try to complicate it, um, but it's hard in professional sport to, um, you know, go through that kind of process, you know, because um, sport is is one of the one of the <clears throat> you know kind of fields of life there where you know there are many i guess character features and virtues that that they're kind of presented to the people in, in the best possible way that's why people relate to to athletes and what they do because of the sacrifice because of the fight because you know there is no no way around it basically you have to earn uh, the respect and earn the trophies and success by yourself especially in tennis um but you know, it seems to me that, uh, especially nowadays, I mean, um, everything is observed through the lens of you know material success, and um, you know who lifts more trophies, uh, gets more respect, you know, more fame, more money, and and a better status in in the society. So I mean, that's and it's hard in this kind of, so to say, uh, um, values, a set of values to to kind of go through that kind of process, but. You know, for me, it's it's equally important, even more important, to uh, take care of myself as a human being and and what goes around off the court as well. Uh, and in the process, I I believe that that's going to positively affect my own tennis career as well. So you think it empowers you? Of course it does. We're going to change language now. Thank, Thank you. you.